Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE. And this video is an extension to video number 77, which was titled The Reference Plane, and video number 78, which was titled Building VNA Calibration Loads. And in those videos, I took something like three identical high quality connectors and I made a flat plane, whether it was machined or whether, in this case, all I had to do was grind off the center pin. But I had an open, two small 0805 resistors and a thin piece of copper or brass that was soldered for a short. And I measured those. And I came to the conclusion that they were good out to about a gigahertz and left everything as such and used them, used them accordingly. I have a HP 8753 analyzer which goes to 3 gigahertz and I have a near new uh, set of calibration loads for that analyzer. The SMA um, male calibration load is shown here even though these are female connectors they call it the male load because it connects to a male connector but I have both the male and female 3.5 millimeter which are compatible with SMA connectors. I have these loads, uh, I've had them checked and they are in intolerance and good. And I made made the measurements. This is a 4170 shown here, but my large analyzer I used, and I calibrated the large analyzer. And what I did, so I calibrated it with the calibration kit, and then I measured the calibration loads themselves. And what I got was, for a short, shown here on the left, I see an arc going from 300 kilohertz to 3, to three gigahertz, the 50 ohm point, when I have a 50 ohm load connected there is great and the open I see a rotation on the ro open also and the manual indicates that that's exactly uh, correct and the reason it's correct is because what they do is the VNA via some mechanism in here it doesn't matter what it is and maybe an adapter if you don't have the right sex calibration loads but Somewhere past the adapter here is where the actual reference plane for the calibration loads is. My 8753 takes that and removes moves this reference plane back to this point, knowing precisely what those the measurement is on those little um, loads in the 87 uh, excuse me in the 85033D calibration kit is. Now you may want to move the reference plane to here in case this adapter was needed because you didn't have the correct sex of uh, open short load, but the analyzer automatically moves it here. So I could easily do line extension if you want to move it to here also. But anyways, I, I did this, and when I added 34.038 picoseconds of delay. Now, this analyzer does not call, call the moving the reference plane line extension, which I think is a more common term. It calls it electrical delay. But nevertheless, it does exactly the same thing. And you can see when I put 34.038 picoseconds of delay in there, the short was a dot as, as swept from 300 kilohertz to 3, 3 gigahertz. The 50 ohm load was a dot, and the open was a dot. So everything looks great. And then what I did was I took my loads. And I put my loads on there, and again, with no line extension or no delay, we see the rotation we saw with with the um, with the 85033 calibration kit. My de my delays are a little different than their delays, and so my rotations are a little bit different because the length of my uh, loads is slightly different. But we see a very good match up through three gigahertz for the 50 ohm load, which is good, and we s we see these two rotations. So then the next step was to change the line extension or the electrical delay and I matched the short with 43.989 picoseconds. The 50 ohm load looked good and the open still had some rotation indicating that the open is a slightly different length than the short. The fact that the open shows rotation in this direction means that the open is slightly longer and the reason for that is because the open has fringing capacitance on the uh, at the end of it, and that fringing capacitance makes the load look a little bit longer. So I decided I'd see if I could make the open be a little bit better. The next thing I did was, looking at the open alone, 43.989 picoseconds is what I need it to be, um, the length needs to be to match the short, 
and it turns out 47.151 picoseconds is what it really is. So I need to grind enough off my open to for that amount of electrical delay. So what's shown here is at 47.151 picoseconds, before it was a dot, now it's now it moves up after I ground uh, 12 thousandths of an inch off from the connector. That's all it was ground off was 12 thousandths or 0.3 millimeters. But the 43.989 picoseconds of delay gives me a dot here. And if you look closely, you'll see this is the flat connector. This one you can see just a little bit of a little bit of a, a grind in there. I chucked this up and I put a and I milled a tenth inch diameter hole in the center of this insulator, 12 thousandths of an inch deep. I could have taken a Dremel tool and gone in here and ground away on it. But by doing that, I ended up with both of them being the same electrical delay. And they look very, very good. It's up to th up through three gigahertz, which is kind of amazing for something that you know, it didn't cost very much to make at all. And here's an example in SimSmith of, as to what's going on that might help. What I've done here, zoom in a little closer on this. I've got an open as referenced by this one gig ohm resistor. I've got a small piece of transmission line which matches my measurements previously, which is 11.34 milli inches. Now, 12 thousandths is what I ground off. 12 milli inches is what it is what I ground off. 11.34 is what Sim Smith predicts. It's really hard at those kind of numbers to um, to see whether the dot's a dot or it's got a little bit of an arc. But if we look at 100 megahertz, what we see is no rotation at all. At a gigahertz, we see a rotation. It's hard to see it if you if I get the whole Smith chart in here, but. We see some rotation at a gigahertz, and we see more rotation at, th at, th at three gigahertz. And this is due to this extra piece, extra piece of line. And if we plot in SimSmith the phase of gamma, and I plotted that by doing nothing more than saying a plot gamma, gamma right here of g dot z n, the input impedance right here. We see, and I want the angle of it we see that ignoring this 12 thousandths of an inch, uh, really, you know what I mean, up to say 500 megahertz, it's less than half a degree of phase shift. It's about one degree of phase shift at, at a gigahertz, and it's about three degrees of phase shift, or rotation, uh, at three gigahertz. And that, believe it or not, that um, that's all it takes, is the 11 or 12 thousandths of an inch to reduce that to, that phase shift to zero. So anyways, if you've built some of those loads that I, I proposed in video number 78 and you have the ability to grind off just a little bit of the open, they will work to a little bit higher frequency a little bit better. This is, you know, just, I suspect probably very few people will do this. And it's, it's more of an exercise in understanding how important it is at these kind of frequencies to have the, the reference plane be the same for all the loads, of course. But nevertheless, I thought, Somebody might, might find this interesting, and I will re report on the results for the uh, Nano VNA, which is what started this when I got the loads for the Nano VNA recently, and I started measuring those. I'll do a video on that here in a little bit, but nevertheless, uh, I thought I'd mention that uh, this might be something some people might find interesting. Thank you again.